Before you start your next project, visit my website and check out my professional woodworking plans. The detailed instructions along with material lists and free video tutorials on YouTube will help you build a project that will last a lifetime. Hey everyone and welcome back to the shop. In this episode we'll build this mobile cart for my thickness planer. It measures 24 by 24. It's 17 inches high and has a very sturdy storage drawer. I've also laminated plexiglass to the top and back and I think it looks pretty cool. And if you want to build this project there are plans available on my site. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm building the box out of 3 quarter inch birch plywood and I'll get started by cutting the parts to size. I make the long cuts with the saw stop and use my cross cut sled on the Powermatic to cut the parts to length. I'll screw the sides to the back first so I'll measure over 3 eighths of an inch and measure down 2 7 and 12 and pre-drill holes for the screws. I'll attach the sides to the back first using wood glue and I'm going to tack the parts in place to keep them from shifting around. And then for a stronger joint I use a 3 quarter inch construction screw. With the sides attached to the back of the cabinet, the next step is to cut the parts for the top and bottom. Next, I'll measure and mark to drill and countersink holes in the back and sides of the cabinet. I'll drop the bottom of the cabinet in place, hold it in position with a clamp, and attach it with inch and three quarter construction screws. Because I want the base to be more substantial and be able to hold the weight of the planer, I'm going to line the inside of the box with three quarter inch plywood. Back at the table saw, I'll rip the parts to width and then set up a stop block on the miter saw and cross cut both inserts to length. After evenly applying the wood glue, I'll attach the inserts with inch and a quarter screws. With most of the work done on the cabinet, the next step is the drawer. And I want this to be a pretty heavy duty drawer and I don't mind adding weight to this cabinet because that's just going to add to the stability. So I'm building the drawer with 3 quarter inch plywood and for the bottom of the drawer, I'll use half inch. Whenever I'm building drawers, I take a good look around the shop first to find some of those random cutoffs that have been hanging around because building drawers is often a great time to use them up. I'll get started on the drawers by ripping the plywood at 12 and a quarter. This drawer will run on metal drawer glides so I need to allow for a half of an inch on each side of the drawer. So I'll measure the drawer opening and subtract an inch. The drawer that I'm making needs to be 20 inches wide and that measurement needs to include the sides of the drawers. And I'm about to cut the front and back of the drawers to length. And a good way to get that measurement is to put the sides together and hold the tape at the 20 inch mark. And you'll see that the measurement is 18 and 9 sixteenths. And the reason for that is three quarter inch plywood is often just a little bit lighter than three quarters of an inch.
I've set the fence at a half inch and I'm using a quarter inch blade in the table saw to make a groove for the drawer bottom. With the groove cut in the drawer sides, the drawer front, and the test piece, I'll cut a second groove in the test piece and test the fit. Once I've got a good fit, I can finish cutting the half inch groove in all the parts. With the grooves for the drawer bottom, cut into the sides of the drawer and the front of the drawer. I'll measure down to where the groove begins, which is 11 and 3 eighths, and I'll rip the back of the drawer at that measurement. I'm building the drawers by screwing them together, so the next step is to measure and mark to pre-drill holes for the screws. To drill the holes, I'll measure up from the bottom one and three quarters, one in the center at six and an eighth, and one down from the top at one and three quarters. Just like when I built the cabinet, I find it really easy to tack the parts together with a nail before screwing them in place for the stronger joint. With the drawer assembled, the next step is to take a measurement for the bottom of the drawer holding the tape in the groove and measuring to the back. I'm at 21 and 3 quarters. Groove to groove in the back, I'm at 19. I've added a bead of glue to the front of the drawer and now I'll drop the bottom in place. And I'll attach it to the back with a few screws. I'm covering the back and top of this cabinet with acrylic. This step isn't necessary, but I think it's going to look really cool. If you don't want to use acrylic plexiglass, Formica is another option and it's a similar process. I cut the plexiglass a half inch oversized and then sand it with 120 grit sandpaper for good paint adhesion. Next I'll apply two coats of latex paint. The color is kind of an off-white that I mixed up with some old paint that's been hanging around the shop. While the paint is drying, I'll make a few plugs with a plug cutting bit in the drill press and I'll use them to fill the countersink screw holes in the cabinet. Using a little wood glue, I'll tap the plugs in place and allow the glue to dry before using a router to cut them flush with the cabinet. This router setup with the open plate works great for this. I've got a separate video on my channel. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description. I've allowed the paint to dry and sanded the cabinet. The next step is to attach the acrylic using contact cement. It's probably a better idea to use water-based contact cement with this process, but I didn't have any in the shop. This is the solvent-based contact cement, and it has a really strong smell, so definitely wear a mask. The trick here is to only apply a thin coat on the painted surface. If it takes too long to dry, the solvent-based contact cement can potentially act as a paint remover. I'm pretty sure that this would not be an issue using the water-based contact cement. It takes about 15 minutes for the contact cement to dry to touch, and once it's dry, I'll attach the back first 
allowing for a quarter inch overhang on all sides. Next I'll use a flush cut bit in the router to trim the overhang, then I'll repeat the process to attach the top. I'm using metal drawer slides for this project and a great way to position them is to simply use a piece of scrap wood as a jig. For the drawer front, I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood. I'll cut it to size and then use iron on edge banding to hide the end grain. After drilling and countersinking holes from the inside of the drawer, I'll position the drawer front and attach it with four screws. Before attaching the casters, I'll use a roundover bit in the router to soften the edge of the acrylic. A great tool to have when you're attaching hardware is a Vix bit. A VIX bit is a self-centering, spring-loaded drill bit. I'm using one here to pre-drill the holes for the screws that I'm using to attach the casters. After giving the cabinet a final sanding with 180 sandpaper, the next step is finish. The finish that I'm using on this project is Mohawk's Finisher's Choice solvent-based clear lacquer. You need to use a solvent-based lacquer to stick to the acrylic. I'll apply three coats of lacquer, sanding in between each coat with 320 sandpaper. The last step is to make the drawer pull. This is a simple design with a 7 degree angle at the bottom and a slight roundover at the front edge. I'm attaching the planer with four number 12 2 inch long screws. I'll pre-drill into the cabinet with an eighth inch drill bit and then drill into the plexiglass only with a quarter inch bit. The larger hole through the plexiglass will keep the screw from cracking it. Okay, well, I am really happy with the way this turned out. I think it's a great addition to the shop, a really good use of space. I like this plexiglass top and back, and I'm going to store this just to the left of this mobile workstation, which has also turned out to be a great addition to the shop. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Before you start your next project, click on the link in the description for my professional woodworking plans and build a piece of furniture that will last a lifetime.